all right good morning ladies and gentlemen thank you once again for tuning in for today's class uh today we'll be beginning the conversation on how to construct your snail farms as you would know by now we have different types of snailry there are concrete pen systems wooden pens which we call the arch box system the tier of tires the um, basket methods the drums you know these are all small scale systems of rearing snails like we've said from many of our previous videos um the intensive and the semi-intensive system and what makes up the intensive system and what makes up the semi-intensive system so we've discussed all of that so just in case you've not seen those videos you can do well to subscribe and check out those videos uh, from our previous um, publications so today we're going to be looking at um, how to construct a concrete pen uh, snow farm now the concrete pen is built with blocks cement sand and concrete now how do you begin to construct a concrete pen the first thing you must do is to get the dimension of the land then you clear the land make sure the debris are taken off the ground get a plain soil or surface uh, and also uh, prepare the land adequately for uh, uh, construction now how to go about the construction there are some factors you have to look out for how many pens you want to build will determine the space required for the farm if you want to build a hundred pens you have to have a space that will accommodate hundred pens cleared if you want 200 300 just based on the number of the pens you need you have to clear an adequate amount of space that will take in the pens and also have some space around the snow farm because you want to be able to walk freely around the snow farm you don't want butches to come close to the snow farm so you can ward off predators like snakes and other uh, deadly reptiles and amphibians that can be of great danger to the farm staff and also the animals so once you have been able to identify the number of pens you want to construct then the next thing will be for you to uh, dig the foundations so you can see a step-by-step -step process of it as we show you on our screen so the foundation is dug based on what you want now this particular video uh this particular picture you're seeing is the foundation for 100 pens which is about uh 50 feet by 50 feet that will give you a hundred pens so what you do is we run the foundation foundation has to be four coaches of block two blocks will go under the ground then you have two coaches afloat the ground so you can see what it looks like then after that is done you have to make sure the ground is leveled properly leveled and filled you sand fill it or fill it with filling sand as you can see after using the filling sound on it you ram it ensure that the soil is well uh, leveled and also pour water on it to ensure that it sediments very well it settles very well now after all of that is done then we'll do what we call the casting or the german floor as you can see on your screen this is a casted floor now it is on top this floor that will have the demarcations done so for the pens that comes in you don't need to do additional foundation all the blocks that mix up the concrete pens will be laid on top of this slab that you're seeing on the screen so you will also see the process of laying the blocks on the slab so you don't have to do additional foundation so the only foundation you do is the perimeter blocks now once you do the perimeters block, uh, perimeter blocks, remember we said two coaches down and uh, two coaches above the ground. Then you do a German floor that is about four to five inches thick. Now the reason why we're doing this casted floor you're still seeing on the screen is because we want to ward off predators like ants, especially ants uh, that burrow from under the ground to attack the snails. So with this casted floor, 
ants cannot come off from the ground to attach attack your snails so then we do the demarcation of the pens now the demarcation is done on top of this slab then once the demarcation is done you can see the pens this pens you're seeing right now are built on top of that slab you saw just before this particular video uh, sorry just before this particular picture so these are the pens and what they look like now after this process the next process you will see is the covering now if you're doing this during the rainy season it is best for you to roof the area before you begin to do the concrete pens the plastering and all of that because if you don't do that if you begin to do the block work and the plastering while the place is still open you'll figure out that the rain will come pouring and it will disrupt the work so once you have been able to get your perimeter area get make sure your your roofing is done immediately so even when it begins to rain it won't affect the work going on under the roof but if it's a dry season you can do it either way you can still do the roofing before you do the German floor just like you can see uh, the next clip here we have the roof done while the concrete work is still ongoing under the roof so it is always preferable to do it that way because you'll be able to uh, relieve the workers of some stress either from the excess heat of the sun or from direct rainfall so everything you are doing under the roofed area is secured so yeah now once you have been able to roof and you finish the block work you must plaster the block work now the reason why we're plastering the concrete pens especially the side walls of the concrete pen is to prevent the snails from eating into the blocks because if you don't uh plaster the block the the sides of the blocks very well you discover that the snails will begin to eat into the block and they will damage the pens in no uh in no uh in, within a very short period of time they will damage all the blocks now what are they looking for in the block they are looking for calcium carbonate the cement you use in constructing your blocks there is a, a, a substance called calcium carbonate in it and snails require this calcium carbonate for uh, developing of their shell and also egg production that is why additional calcium is always given to snails like uh, periwinkle shells egg shells snail shells and so on is given to snails just for them to meet up their calcium requirement but this calcium carbonate which is from limestone that is in this cement attracts the snails so if you don't plaster the walls of your pens it makes it a lot easier for them to eat into the wall and before you know it they will damage the block and escape from it so that is why you must ensure that the pens are well plastered in order to ward off the snails from damaging or destroying the blocks within a very short period of time and also you must understand that the floor of this casted ground must not be shined or smoothened once you do the casting which is the German floor the floor is okay whatever you are doing with regards to plastering and shining has to be just by the walls of the concrete uh, pens not the floor because if you make the floor very smooth just like my table is it is very smooth now if you make it that smooth you think you discover that the water will percolate there the water you introduce into the pens to make the pen cool for the snails will remain there but this pause in the german floor will allow the water to drain gradually and of course you are not expected to uh, pour in a lot of water at a time it just what you do is to sprinkle the water and ensure that the surface of the soil is wet so the snails can move easily and feed and carry out their activities so this is why you must plaster the walls of the pen but not the floor the floor must remain the way it is after the casting then uh, in order to ward off predators you will see that we have a water trench around the uh, prepared pens you can see from the screen there's a water trench around the pen this is to ward off predators that will be coming out from uh, since we have been able to cast the floor 
uh, ants can no longer come from under the floor they will need to come from outside the environment so we need to create this water trench round the concrete pen pour water into it and a disinfectant in the water so that any ants anything that wants to cross into the concrete pen structure will have to fall into this pit between the outside wall and the wall of the concrete pen uh, that contains water and uh, a disinfectant and that will invariably kill whatever insects or predator that is crawling into the concrete pens so that is why you must have this around your snow farm now the dimension of that is one foot wide but it will go round the snow pen and as long as the snail pen as wide as the snail pen that's how it is built so this is a complete breakdown of how to construct your concrete pen then for the flies and the predators insects parasites that will fly through the top to the pen you have to use a mesh, which is the mosquito net and the wire mesh i also mentioned this i think i talked about it in detail in our previous class so if you've not seen that video please go back to it again and for those of you who are viewing from youtube uh, paraventure when this video is uploaded please check out uh, subsequent videos on the channel for you to get updated so uh, that's why we cover the top with the uh, wire mesh and the mosquito nets to ward off predators and parasites uh, especially like reptiles like the lizards monitor lizards uh, cockroaches and all other things that would fly above this water trench we talked about so you can see the look of the pens they are well arranged are well covered and properly uh, uh, constructed so this is how you prepare a concrete pen now uh, the size of the pen i know you would want to ask that question the size of the pen is 2.5 feet by 5 feet so the width of each pen in to in is 2.5 feet while the length of the pen is 5 feet so that is the size of the pen so it's a little bit complicated because of the way the design is you can see how they are so uh, should in case you want to go into a commercial farming i would not advise that you go about it on your own but if it's a small scale farm you can try it out on your own but if you're looking at something on a commercial scale please do well to give us a call and we would come and set it up for you uh, properly uh, it is always better for you to spend an extra 100,000 or 200,000 to get the right thing done than for you to try to cut that cost and at the end of the day start all over again to spend millions so that is why uh, the services of a consultant is always necessary when you are going into commercial farming not small scale with small scale you can try a lot of things and burn your hands and correct yourself but if you are going into commercial snail or any livestock farming you need a consultant all right so this is the much we're going to tell you for the um a concrete pen construction of course it's virtually everything you need to know about it we've shown you clips and pictures from the foundation to the filling sand and ramming and all of that to the point where you uh, cover the pen so after all of that the next thing will be to introduce the right type of soil and uh, stock up your pens which we are going to talk about much later so we're going to look at now the uh osh box system we've talked about the concrete pen and remember this concrete pen you can have it uh whatever num number you want if it's two if it's three the the principles are the same everything that has to do with the construction is the same you don't have to do anything different from what we have said all the steps you take to construct a commercial concrete pen structure is the same steps you take to construct a small scale concrete pen structure so that is what it looks like so now we're going to look at the arch box or the wooden pens now the wooden pens are elevated from the ground you can see them on the screen uh, even in one of our previous lectures we showed you how that looked so uh, all you need to do if you want to start on a small scale preferably with the wooden pen box get a carpenter within your environment then you can give him the dimensions as we are going to spell them out on this video 
that's why it's always good that you have this video saved with you now the arch box is elevated from the ground above the ground is about two feet high from the ground and the, to the total height of it is one meter so the box also measures uh, 2.5 feet by 5 feet now you may want to ask why are we using this dimension a lot of persons use different dimensions now why we use this dimension is because we want it in a way that when you are attending to the snails your hand is able to get to every nook and crannies of the pen to all the extremes of the pen if the width is more than 2.5 our hand the normal human hand length is not uh, i think the tallest person i know would not be more than three feet long but not everybody is as tall as that so 2.5 is the average length of uh, every human hand so uh, with 2.5 widths, you are able to get to the extreme of the uh, uh, pen and also trace down uh, left, right, and center. But if the width is assuming 4 feet, 5 feet, or 3 point something feet, you figure out that your hand cannot get to the extreme end of the uh, uh, pen, even no matter how you stretch. So if there are snails on that end and there are some activities you need to do, your hands will not get to it. So you have to exert more uh, energy in order to attend to the pen. At some point, you may even need to go inside the pen, which is not advisable because you'll be compacting the soil when you stand inside the pen. So that is why we use our old standard dimension of 2.5 feet by 5 feet. So your hand can have access to every part of the pen. And that is adequate uh, for the snails as well and also for good management uh, practices so that is why we use that so even for the uh, arch boxes or the wooden boxes we still do 2.5 feet by 5 feet now all you need to do is this 12 feet by 1 feet uh, sorry I think it's 12 inches by uh, 1 inches boards you just need two on top of each other lapping themselves as you can see on these uh, uh, wooden boxes so with that you have a very good uh, wooden box constructed you can have them in their numbers probably from 10 20 30 then you begin your production with them now the advantage of the wooden boxes you don't have to bend so much like you would do for the concrete pens remember if you Take note of the concrete pens. The height of the pen from the German floor is just two coaches of block, and you have to bend down a bit to attend to them. But because the concrete pen, sorry, the, the wooden boxes are enraised from the ground, so you can stay in a standing position and walk on the snow. So it's a little uh, less stressful to walk on. Uh, the only thing is they are not as durable as the concrete pens though when you use very hard woods you can you can use them for three to five years but be that as it may the concrete pen we are talking about years if you construct it properly you're looking at 20 30 years they are still there so definitely for commercial production the concrete pen is perfect so with the wooden boxes the the base of the box there are some openings because you have to join woods together now, when you join the woods, no matter how they lap together, there will still be some spaces in between where water can drip down. So that's why you see that when you have the uh, wooden boxes constructed and you introduce the, um, what is it called, the top soil inside, then you sprinkle water, the water will gradually drain out because of those little uh, joining of the woods at the base. That is where your water go out from. Because somebody may want to ask, how will your water drain from these uh, concrete, uh, sorry, from these uh, wooden boxes. So that is how the water is drained off from the uh, wooden boxes. So it's quite simple. If you want to construct it, um, for those who want to do small scale system, you can register with us online. Uh, we'll just give you our fees. It's not so expensive for online registration for us to mentor you. And that's way uh, we can tell you how to do these things, especially if you still are not confident to do it on your own, even after this training or listening to this video. 
so we can give you specifications or even talk to your carpenter on what to do but the baseline is very hard woods must be used so that the woods don't get damaged by the water you introduced in there so another thing you need to know is the foot of these uh arch boxes or wooden pens must be deep inside a container containing condemned engine oil because it is from this foot of the boxes that ants will be able to climb to the top of the box and attack your snails but when you put the foot of the boxes inside a container containing a condemned engine oil then ants will not be able to have access to the foot of the uh, box or the cage so that way you have been able to ward off predators that will creep from the ground to attack your snails up there then the same thing we'll do for the concrete pens which is the covering we'll use the wire mesh or the chicken mesh and the um uh, what is it called the mosquito net the mosquito net comes first then the chicken or wire mesh comes on top so it will be able to ward off both reptiles and flies that may want to attack your snails. So this is what the uh, uh, wooden box looks like. And uh, that is how it is being constructed. Remember, this is usually done for uh, small scale farmers. The, you may think it's a lot cheaper than the concrete pen, but the truth is no. If you want to do it on the commercial scale, it will be more expensive than the concrete pen because woods are very expensive especially good woods for roofing that is why you see that roofing is a structure it's not it is job it is quite expensive it's capital intensive so these woods are very hard woods so they don't come cheap all right now next is the uh, tier of tire method now this tier of tire method you can easily wear snails with tires but this is mainly for demonstration it's not a commercial snail farm as i when people call and say they want to go into commercial snail farm using tire no that's not a farm uh using tire is good but only for demonstration purpose probably uh you just want to tell yourself that ah this guy talks too much let me see if what he's saying is true then you can get a few tires you can see the way the tires are arranged you put about three to four tires together the down tire is filled with soil then the second tire that follows that one you have water there then the third one you have food inside the rounds of the tire those round holes inside the tire you put water in one you put food in the other one and the one on the top you just cover it with a net you can rear your snails successfully there for a short period of time because this will not be sufficient for you to raise a commercial snail. Now, the thing is, the head on the down tire, that's where the snails go to lay their egg. When they want to lay, they burrow under the head and lay their eggs, then they come out. And when they want to feed, they feed from the third layer of the tire where you have the feed. If they want to drink water they drink from the second to the base layer of the tire where you have the water and sunlight cannot affect them here because they are mostly under the inside the rounds of the tire which is very cool and sun cannot penetrate into that round area of the tire so you can have at least 20 30 snails in this set of tire where you have four tires placed on top of one another and uh, feed them and manage them there so with this system you can even start it with zero naira because the tires are tires that are being condemned if you go to the roadside to the organizers shop there are loads of tires that are condemned you can take a few tires from there if they give you then you if you have the time to go to the bush and fetch some snails then you have succeeded in having your snail pen and the snails for free then what do these snails feed on they feed on vegetables fruits condemned fruits like watermelon cucumber uh, or papaw and so on so you can see that you can actually start this system of snow farming without spending even a dime because the tire you got it for free the snails you hunted them yourself the feed are things around us that we can pick and give to them so it's totally free so this cannot be a commercial snail. 
but a small scale snail farm for you to practice or for home consumption that is the only thing you can do with tier of tire method you can have sufficient tires to rear snails in their thousands except you want us to start locking our cars inside our houses so you don't pull off our tires to go and rear snails yeah so and that's on aside now uh next we'll look at the drum method the drum method you can also use condemned drums as you can see from the uh, screen you can use drums that are not really put to use now these drums you cut them into two equal half now when you cut them into two equal halves you burrow some holes just make some holes under the the base of the drum then fill in the top soil or loamy soil to about uh, four to five inches depth on the floor of the uh, drum then you can get in your feed get in your dry plantain leaves to cover on one side of the drum and also feed them there so but the thing is this is also a very small scale system because after some time the drum will begin to rust because remember you have to introduce water into the drum on daily basis now in doing so before you know it the drum will begin to get rust and rust is not good for snails so this also is an experimental method it's not a commercial method of rearing snails you can if you, just in case it starts raining and you find a few snails around your environment and you think you don't want to use them immediately or consume them immediately and you want to rear them uh, gradually then you can get drums and do what you're seeing on the screen and the top of this drum also is covered with uh, insect nets in order to prevent flies and other predators and also remember that the drum the tire whatever system you're using you must have an overhead shade uh, apart from the tire system every other uh, system you need an overhead shade because for the tire system uh, the snails are inside the round holes of the tire so the sun that penetrates does not affect them but every other system you need an overhead shade so even for the drum method you need to have it where you have an overhead shade so this will be able to take care of the issue of heat from the sun and also direct rainfall into the drum so this is the drum system uh, the, the the management system remains the same it's just the design of the uh, infrastructural work which is drum in this particular case then we look at the uh, low fence pen the low fence pen is there on the screen you can see it it has a water trench around it as well now the idea of the low fence pen is to use it for fattening we use it to fatten the snails it is always best to introduce young or baby snails into these paddocks we can also call them mini paddocks instead of low fence pen we can call them mini paddocks where young snails are introduced into the paddocks and are fed intensively and uh, the growth is also very fast so you can see there are vegetation planted inside the uh, uh, paddock or the low fence pen now the, the the snails cannot escape from this low fence pen why because the net is bent inwards you can see it on the screen it is bent inwards and because it is so light and flappy when the snails climb above and try to want to go out on that part where the net is bent inward it's almost impossible for the snail to make that turn so by the time they try to turn at that point the shell of the snail is facing downwards while the meat is facing or the foot is facing upwards so the shell will pull it down back so as you see them like the snails cannot escape from them we've been using them for quite a while as well uh, a good number of years we've been using them uh, for uh, production but basically they are meant for fattening so you just introduce the young snails there and grow them out they are sprinklers sometimes you can even use hose to sprinkle water within that uh, paddock that you're seeing 
So what are the things we'll plant on this paddock? The same things we'll plant in the greenhouse. You have the uh for four, sorry, you have the dwarf banana, you have the uh uh watermelon, you have the uh sweet fusatu, you have spinach, you have um different types of creeping crops like water leaves and so on. The whole idea is to ensure that the area is totally covered with vegetation and the snails are left in there to feed and also uh, additional feed like the concentrate mash is also introduced into uh, the paddock for them. So this is what the paddock looks like. It's almost built like the way we build the concrete pen but the thing is the middle of it there's no slab there's no German floor or any form of casting it is the bare soil then the surrounding of the paddock or the mini and uh, the, the low fence pen you have uh, a water trench that prevents any crawling thing from coming from the house side and inside you have your snows so I am sure this is quite simple as you can see it that's the way it is there's no magic they just do it probably uh, they you don't do it too wide what you need to do is some five meters by five meters or two meters by two meters three meters by three meters but the, the the biggest size should not be more than five meters by five meters so that you can easily control the population of the snails and also observe the snails there are stages of development inside the paddock so that is how this is being arranged. So these are all small older systems of rearing snails. You can have lots of paddock if you want to go into commercial production. Now the paddock system is a low cost greenhouse. We can call it a low cost greenhouse because we don't have a dome or a, a mesh over it. It's not covered. Unlike the greenhouse, the difference between the paddock and the greenhouse is that the greenhouse is completely covered and uh, all forms of insects are also ward off. So this one, the snails are exposed to some form of predation from flying insects, though the ones that crawl from the ground are taken care of, but the flying ones are still a burden in this case. And sometimes uh, locust and grasshopper can also uh, infest your vegetation in the paddock. Why? Because it is open down. So it's more like a low cost greenhouse because for the greenhouse, all these measures are taken care of to ensure that the vegetation and the snails are secured from every form of parasites and predators. So this is called uh, a paddock system or low fence fence system. So we'll go over to the greenhouse system. We'll go over to the greenhouse so you can see the greenhouse is on the screen. Now the greenhouse is one of the best commercial systems under the semi-intensive system of snail rearing. So as you can see, the greenhouse system is uh, quite unique. Uh, we're going to talk about it in our next video. We don't want uh, uh, to take the old day. Like I said, this topic will be broken into two or three uh, different uh, clips because uh, it's quite a long one. We need to take time to break down uh, these topics one after the other on how to construct your snail pen. So uh, yeah, that's the greenhouse on the screen. So we are going to talk about it in our next lecture. That's where we'll start from. So if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do well to click on that subscribe button so that uh, as we continue to progress with this lecture series, you'll be getting detailed information on how to construct your own snail farm all right so this is where we'll call it a day for today thank you god bless you and bye bye